G'day folks, Alex McKellar here again with a, another race replay here from Road America this week. This was um, the tail end of, I did quite a bit of racing here this week, really enjoyed practicing uh, big pack racing. This was the Japanese strength of field, the skipjack on a Saturday night, had a big turnout. In fact, this and the race previous, I did the two races in a row, both of them were in the 4400 strength of field. This race one was... Uh, the main race at 44.51, um, strength of field, uh, track temps been pretty hot, you can see 41 here all week. This was a, a real uh, showcase, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, of um, of what the Skip Barber category is about, and good race, good pack racing, um, and, you know, a lot of fun. Some of the names in here are immense, of course, uh, the great Naoya Nagai, um, top Japanese community skip driver uh, and once again put it on pole uh, pretty comfortably two and a half tenths around here not easy to pull Vasco Sorosky the head clown himself was there I've raced a bit with Vasco this week had a ball had a blast doing it and he put in a stunner to stick it on the front row next to Nagai just ahead of team there were three team Milo drivers in here number one driver tonight uh, or in this one was Donald Savinal uh, great skippy driver, great bloke too. Uh, he was joined by Hiroyuki Shoda. He, um, he's one of the driving forces behind the Skipjack race. Uh, he's the, one of the organisers, if not the main man. I only managed P5 uh, in this one. I was car number two, but only managed P5. And um, got lucky. It was so tight. You can see there, uh, after Nagai, it's sort of a couple of tenths and you've got you know plenty of people. So... Um, and I was sandwiched then between uh, Shorter and his countryman Hikaru Sasaki. Japanese strength of field race. You got three of them in the, three Japanese drivers in the in the uh, in the top six. Hendrickson, one of two team torpedo drivers. Uh, the Dutchman, great fun to have in a race. Zoma, he's uh, very handy in a skip. Seb Schultz, there's a guy who can steer a skip as well. Only managed ninth. Um, team boss man Russell Clark. I'm just going through the whole thing because I know, knew pretty much everyone in here. It was great. It was like a collection of um, who's who in skippies. You know, obviously, there's some big names missing as well, but uh, it was a great night out. Russell put it in P10. Neil Gardner, another ANZ driver, uh, making the most of it. He's a good guy. Kevin Budgen, one of my favourite characters on iRacing at the moment. Um, uh, the Budgie, he was in there. Uh, starting 12th, um, I just keep going. I didn't know Patrick, haven't seen him before, but I've raced with Ogihara, another Japanese driver, 14th. Katsuyama, new name to me. Kuroda san, I've raced with a fair few times. Otsu, of course, you can see all the Japanese names, it's their community race. The other team torpedo driver, of course, Mr. Jones, one of my favorite characters on iRacing and a great sport of the channel. And Ben Snell, one of my good old Milo mates. Um, so it was great. It was just like the good old days when we all used to get together. There was a few of us in Discord, uh, Donald, um, Russell, Ben and myself. Um, and uh, it, Cowboy was around the race before too. Anyway, enough of that. It was great, honestly. Great to have everyone around and um, uh, really enjoyed the race. But let's go see why. It was um, uh, a, a, such a good one. We'll get the overlays, overlay set up here. 10 laps around Road America in a 4.5k soft. Let's, let's get it going. And of course, this, um, this track this week in the right company uh, in the skips characterised by big pack racing. And I sort of set, a, set myself a goal this week of doing quite a few races. Now, I made a move early there at the inside. I always like the inside in a pack. Um, uh, but I made the move early to get through on shorter uh, to try and get forward. I, um, as I said in the, the other video I did this week, I really like to be in the front two, the three drivers. And I've got um, a couple of, or a few quick ones. Nagai, one of the, one of the best in the world at the moment who we've uh, obviously got to keep an eagle eye on. Uh, less of a threat to drive away here if the, the racing's smart enough because um, the draft here plays such a part. You can see I'm um, just leaving room on the outside as much as anything to let people go have a lane on the outside, but I'm also on the inside 
uh, in the braking zone at five for the first time. Just making sure that um, folks know um, that I don't want them chucking up the inside either. And you can see the whole field halfway through separated by just under six seconds. Um, the pace was on in this one and the quality was up. As we uh, exit the hurry down for the first time. As I was saying, the racing here has been characterised by big packs. Um, I, I think I did 11 races here this week, and I reckon eight, seven or eight of them would have made fantastic race videos, honestly. Um, I picked this one because this is um, these two races, this one and the one we did before it, I managed to podium in that one. Um, they're the highest two strength of field races I've ever done. And um, this one I, I wanted to highlight because it's the, the skipjack, the uh, Japanese strength of field, the Japanese community strength of field race. And um, I want to sort of, you know, support that as well. So we picked this one. Now, um, I've gained one position. Hendrickson's moving forward behind me. He's up two. He got past Shorter on that lap as well. Um, you know, two torpedoes in the race, Hendrickson and Mr. Jones, uh, both good blokes. Uh, I call them tor torpedoes because that's their team name, not <laughs> necessarily because that's how they drive. So again, I like to move on the inside here. Moving forward, you can see the draft really kick in once. Um, uh, I think it was Donald, was it? Yeah, no, it was, um, yeah, it was Donald decided to lift and stay behind. You can see the difference in speed was immediate. Straight up the inside I go. Now, I apologised um, to the guys there because I said that at the start of that lap, we had sort of, I think we'd even broken the draft. Um, and I said, oh, let's settle, let's settle. And then I go and do that because it was, you know, the race could have been won and run there between the four of us potentially. But as you can see, um, you know, Hendrickson has got the pace and he's uh, he's in the draft there. He's only sort of seven tenths off the back. And um, I felt I sort of, I felt bad because I'd ask the guys to settle and then I'd do that just because my mindset at these in these sorts of races here has always been to be in the front couple. I, I sort of let myself get over it though because I know Tim, has got, he hasn't raced a lot, uh, Hendrickson, uh, in fifth at the moment. Uh, but... Uh, historically, his pace is right up there with the best of them. I, I suspected that he might just catch us anyway. But moving on, uh, through the hurry downs then on lap two, we're in a good position here strategically. Uh, I want to be in the front two. Um, and after qualifying fifth, um, realistically, uh, that's about as far back as I would want to qualify. I mean, you always want to qualify forward, but... Um, uh, I knew in the first two laps I needed to move forward um, and it's not something I typically like to do because in this case it came at the expense of the potential breakaway of the four. Um, it was just a natural instinct for me to go through there at turn one. I actually forgot about the breakaway there for a minute and then um, uh, anyway we're back. You can see at the end of lap two, we're coming up on the end of lap two and with the exception of Ortsu, who's obviously had a moment, the whole field is still separated by 12 seconds. Nine seconds, um, you'd almost call the front pack down to Kuroda in P17. Big movers so far. Um, Snell, Ben Snell, who was last off the grid, he's certainly no slouch. He's, uh, he's up four already. Now, I stuck in the draft here, um, and... Um, Vasco Sorosky, he took the the initiative as well. He said there's still a bit of smart racing here. Uh, Sorosky absolutely could have made it three wide, and he moves to the inside now as I clear uh, Nagai, who I suspect lifted. I let Vasco go through and take as fast a line as possible with the compromise entry, and Nagai facilitates that. He could have attacked there on the exit, done the over-under on me, and you'd see Skippy's crossing in front of my nose, but he chose not to. There was sort of intense competition in this pack, but the skill and the decision making, um, as you've seen so far, is pretty good. Uh, really smart, actually. You see Hendrickson moving up the inside there, my mirror, the guy as well. 
Vasco choosing to go the inside. We we talked about that all through the week. You see, I break a lot deeper on the outside, uh, and we end up side by side there. Vasco taking my strategy on board there of protecting the inside at turn five. I lift to facilitate him coming back in. We don't want to be side by side through there. Hendrickson made the move there. You can see halfway down the straight, he moved to the inside, and he made the move to get up into fourth position ahead of Donald Savanal, who's now in fifth. Donald, um, I don't know if you'll watch this or you'll listen, but he's, he's, he's got genuine pace. He's quick and smart. Um, just need to build a bit of confidence. And I'm hoping um, that racing up here, I mean, he like I said, he, he put it on row two in this field. Uh, I'm hoping that's a real confidence building builder for him because I think he's got uh, the real potential to be... Um, you know, taking it to the guys in SNL and these other big races, as you can see here already. You know, he's on 4K I rating. He gets his I rating up a little bit more, gets, you know, guaranteed top split representation, and away you go. Now you can see I've moved to the inside there of Vasco. He left the inside open for me. And again, that's, that's attacking to defend there. I don't want no guy taking the inside of me. See, if I lift, and you saw it on one of the earlier laps where Donald lifted behind on the outside, and I was just, you just have so much more speed if you use the draft. If you lift, it's its a massive difference. So my strategy here, as always, uh, is to go over to the right-hand side to take the inside. I don't mind here if, if, if even two cars go by. Uh, I'm just looking for safety first, minimizing risk. See Vasco go through. Hendrickson's looming in my mirrors as well. He lifts out. I've got Nagai beside me. Two by two we go. Nagai lifts and lets me through the same way as I did for Vasco the previous lap when we were side by side. You can see it is not it's no way the fastest way around here, but um, you know, as well as big pace around here, you need big brains, um, I think. And everyone in this pack so far and throughout has, has been showing that. Now, Vasco surprisingly gave me the inside. As like I said, we've been talking about it all week. But we had enough for gap for him to lift, he thought, to let me over. But what it does is see the blue car of Nagai looming big in the background. There was enough room for me to come over. Nagai didn't push the point there to go too wide with me. He just did enough to get in front of Sorosky, who's now back to third. You see the difference that that inside line makes, right? So the racing line's absolutely on the outside. It's the fastest way around, but the inside um, is strategically so important. Vasco let me in front of him on the outside, but that left the door open on the inside for Nagai. And for some reason, I'm still lifted through <laughs> here um, pretty warm tracks all week it was 41 I think at the start of this one um, the carousel is flat these days in the skip once the tyres are up as is the kink here now again I immediately move to the right if I'm under threat in particular if there's any chance the guy holds out doesn't look to attack he wants to sit Vasco's showing the nose he's doing similarly I think there, just discouraging Hendrickson from having a look. I do expect him to move forward in this one. Um, he is a confident young man and he's got the pace to, to warrant it. He's been out of the skips regularly for a long time though, so um, yeah, I don't know. I wonder how his confidence was playing. I don't know if I've been out for a long time, it'd play in my mind, but he just might carry the confidence naturally not to have to worry. So again, straight over to the right. Talked about this in the other video I did this week. As you see, Nagai and Sorosky both move to the left. And again, I don't mind giving up even two positions here. I see the blue and orange torpedo looming as well. I'm going to stick to the inside. I'm not looking to challenge Nagai. Drop down two gears instead of one. And I actually think I lose three positions. I wasn't too keen to lose three. But uh, there's an answer to your question. Look how much we check up here. Down into second gear, briefly, into third. Of course, that's a third gear corner. 
I was happy to give up two, but giving up three, and like I said, that question around Tim's confidence is well and truly been answered. Look at Vasco, doing the smart thing, hugging, hugging the inside. He learnt from the previous lap. And a guy on the outside, Tim, nowhere to go. McKellar thinking, can I come up the inside? We've got Donald behind, who is racing smart, and he's got half a second on Sasaki. And at this stage, all the way down to Ben Snell, or now Augie Hutter in 15th, is separated by six to seven seconds. That says a bit about the quality of the race, doesn't it? And the fact that, well, to be fair, we're not exactly setting the, the timing sheet on fire. Our last lap was a, well, it was a high 33 for the leader. The front pack, fastest one in the front pack was uh, Donald with a, a 33.8 Sasaki. Oh, actually, it was a couple of hundreds far, faster. So, Zoma in seventh, faster again. He says there's a the front seven have got you know just over that second mark gap. It's really a pack of seven, but you can see there's not much in it all the way down through the field. It's Tom Vasco taking the inside again. Uh, Hendrickson nowhere to go go down to second which is some driver's preference anyway but you expect to be going a bit quicker even if you do grab second to get on the gas early that time it was just the two by twos uh, slowing us down checking us up but um, if you're open to it it can be frustrating in some tracks but here it's actually part of the story actually part of the character of the track in this car that um, you can expect to be slow uh, even in the front pack, but the racing's awesome. As we see Vasco once again use it, taking the McKellar line up the right-hand side of the track. We see uh, Nagai and Hendrickson taking the outside line. I stick to my inside line, make sure Donald doesn't have a look. Vasco, I said a live stream, this one actually, I said, oh, geez, you're lucky you're my, you're my mate, Vasco, and I let him back in there. You can hear me lift on the approach to the braking zone. <laughs> in all honesty, though, I probably would have anyway. Interesting that um, Nagai doesn't um, follow suit in any way in the early stages, and again, um, Hendrickson leaves the door open as well for Vasco. I'm just a little bit offline. I could probably afford to be online there and then come underneath Hendrickson more properly. Uh, but it's difficult there because I'm trying to discourage those behind me. But also, if I did try and go underneath Hendrickson there in the blue and orange car, um, there was a big, big, greeny, bluey, yellow clown in front of that space as well. So it wouldn't have been able to get done. So I lifted and got out of it on the run up to uh, turn six. Just come down to turn eight at the bottom of the hurry downs. We're still line astern. No surprise to see Nagai on front. It'll be interesting to see how it goes in SNL. Like these two races we did here last night were, uh, like I said, both just shy of 4,500 strength of field. Um, yeah, look, we could see anything here tonight, depending on who rocks up. I expect we'll get over five strength of field because that's what we've been seeing week in week out um, interesting to see the difference in um, aggression in the big one for Sunday Night Lights as well that's Hendrickson doing the wiggle he was actually in the race he was PMing me in the iRacing chat um, uh, telling me how slow everyone was around him um, that wiggle there is just making sure everyone is looking at him in the mirrors just saying, hey, I'm faster than you. Come on, get a wriggle on. And that, you know, that might be the case. I haven't seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with Nagai, for example. But, you know, he, uh, he qualified in seventh, so I don't know if he got two laps in, so maybe the pace isn't quite there. But, uh, again, Vasco taking the McKellar line over on the right giving himself the inside into turn one which I think is a good play myself and he gets in behind leaves the door open for McKellar but then oh I actually had a word to Tim there he moved quite late I thought I stick to my strategy in there you see I got down to second that's how slow we were going <laughs> 
but that's like I said part of the character of the racing and the skips here and we've got our group of seven we've got oh, we've got about a 1.8 second gap back to Shorter in eighth you gotta remember Shorter started fourth he's been shuffled back a bit Japanese drivers really have the um, the edge in quality they've got that nailed um, the guy has the race pace to go with it and you can see tonight the uh, the battling is not hyper aggressive and he's racing smart and staying up the front so he's in the box seat at this stage but Hendrickson has moved up five positions and those two occupy the two spots that I want to be in and I'm, I've got to admit by about here I was starting to get a little bit frustrated because um, I wasn't seeing any good sort of opportunities to move forward and I, I really wanted to be in the front two to three so uh, I've got my thinking cap on about uh, what I might want to try and uh, had my eagle eyes open for opportunities as well such a quality field here uh, I mean four and a half K strength of field in the skips you don't come by every day so to be you know competitive in that was a real thrill for me like I said, these two races were the highest strength of fields I've, I've ever raced in. Um, and certainly, uh, I was able to be the most competitive in them too. Most competitive I've been anyway. So, line of stern the whole way there. Which is interesting. I think all of us uh, were thinking about trying to build a gap. And you can see there's a, almost a, three, there's a three second gap between seventh and eighth now so we are a front pack of seven but again the whole field all the way down to jones in p18 separated only by 13 seconds amazing so again i'll move over to the right early oh vasco and hendrickson both go i shuffle left well, at least leaving a lane on the outside. Donald's pretty much content. They're three wide. Oh, I got caught out here because Tim really checked up to let Vasco through. And I thought, well, there's my opportunity. I'll follow the blue and orange torpedo through and see if I can't get a guy and move up to third. And a guy backed out. I still had the compromised entry. I left him the lane, though. And it's going to compromise my exit. But I'm going to hug straight to as left as I can. Um... And hoping, I was hoping Vasco would stay further left, if I'm honest, <laughs> because that would have kept Tim there longer and kept the draft, although Tim uh, looking to the inside as well and gave me good draft. So I was able, in about two corners, I wasn't sure what Tim was doing there, so I lifted early because I knew I had the inside run and would get the drive up to turn six on no guy. Um, Tim happy to fall in there, but... Um, allowed me, uh, you know, through that process of three corners to get the move done. Sometimes you've got to be thinking that way. And I've been caught out on the uh, inside. My strategy of going inside turn one has cost me by the time I've got to turn five because I'm then on the outside. If you go side by side, which you, you can do here, um, you don't typically race that way in the start to early to middle stages of the race but towards the end and particularly in the last lap or two it's not a surprise to be side by side from turn one all the way down to turn five and my inside line on turn one like I said can often mean on the outside of turn five um, but if you can nail it still you can get you'll still be on the outside when you hit turn six but by the time you hit turn seven you're on the inside right uh, and if you're still side by side, which it is absolutely possible to do, um, you get the inside at eight in the hurry downs, though. Or, or sorry, the outside. So the outside of turn one, sorry, the inside of turn one can give you, unfortunately, the outside at turn eight. Uh, and I know that's a complex run to, to visualise, but um, you know. You, those are the scenarios that you can play out in your mind uh, and how they work out, depending on how you want to play your strategy. Side by side, the front two go, and a guy pulls over to the left. I'm happy on the inside. We're on lap nine of ten now. Some of these races here this week have honestly felt like a marathon, and we get our first glimpse at three wide into turn one momentarily. Hendrickson goes deep. 
Basco makes a lane for me on the inside once again. I think about going on the inside and then lift out of it. I thought about it. But I'm back in fourth with, you know, under two laps to go and frustration again. In the last lap, I, I think you're a legit chance uh, from third forward. You're a strong chance from fourth probably struggling as everyone fighting over the inside to turn five catches me out a little bit in the braking zone i'm looking to find the way through here didn't get the drive i was looking for it was too much like shopping trolleys trying to come together in the car park at woolies i had a big brake check there i was very fortunate donald didn't run up the rear of me there good awareness from donald donald the the, uh, the corner checked up way more than i was expecting Down through turn eight. This is the corner I was talking about. It can get sorted from turn one back through that corner there. The furthest I've gone side by side this week, I think, was uh, the previous corner at turn seven. It's been, um, by the time you get to the bottom of the hill at, through the hurry downs at turn eight, uh, it's been sorted. Um, yeah, I've, got, I've done the outside of turn six to give me the inside of turn seven to get a move done, but that's as... Um, I've also actually I've also done the inside of turn six and the outside of turn seven. Everyone's sitting here pos jockeying for position, thinking about where they're going to go for the final lap. You can see both Nagai and Sarovsky defending the inside line, uh, and if I had to move forward, it was going to have to be around the outside. I would absolutely do that on the last lap, and I have done, uh, but not on the second last lap. No point because you blow um, potentially a shot at the win by letting the leader get away. So three tenths behind here. Uh, probably rules out a run into turn one for me. Vasco early move to the left. Nagai covering three wide into turn one. Are we going to do it properly this time? Mikella says, I'll have the inside line. I'll let you guys sort it out. I'm going to stay on the inside. I've had to lift, thinking, thinking. How are we going to get through? I'm thinking I might get through on Hendricks in there and bang! Three through the corner did not work. And on stream, I said, that, my friends, is why you go the inside line through these corners. The racing standard had been excellent throughout the race there. And there was a touch of net code, a touch of no margin for error there. Uh, led to that one. Basco taking the inside line, much to my chagrin. He learnt this week. That's also the McKellar line down the, the big straight run into five. You see, I've sort of almost cleared him. He tries, he then pulls in behind, gives me the run. I imagine he lifted there. Big shout out to Leo, who helped me this week. Consider using first gear through turn five. Just practicing that one still. Oh, terrible run through there. Turn six was not a great effort for me. Now, we're in the second half of the last lap and I'm in the lead. Lux of fortune, right? Right deep into turn eight. Decent exit there. And again, I'm thinking strategy. Now, you should all know by now my strategy out of uh, the kink will be straight over to the right-hand side. <laughs> Hug the inside for Canada. And I'll have Sorosky and Sasaki all over me. No doubt. You can hang it around the outside uh, at Canada Corner and come up the inside of uh, of turn 13. I think it is 13A, and that's what Sorovsky's forced to do. We're, are we going to go three wide? We're certainly two wide. Sasaki backs out. It's too wide. You can get it done from the outside at Canada. You get the inside for the next one. I push my luck. I use second gear. My preference was third, but it's a tighter exit there. Vasco keeps his boot in it. The outside around the... Oh, but he's lifted to fall in behind. I guess he's planning for the uh, the draft to the line. Now I've just got all eyes on focus, getting a good exit, getting a better exit here. Three tenths is enough if you've got a better exit. And you can see he's not really catching. He's not really catching. He's coming late. He will come late. I've gone to the center of the track, so they've got to move one way or the other. Keller gets it. 
Get in there, baby. That, my friends, is my biggest race win ever. Been on the service for, oh, I think, nearly seven years now. Strongest strength of field racing I did was last night, and I got a third, and then I picked up a win in the, the skipjack race. I was, uh, I was stunned. <laughs> I was stoked, absolutely stoked. Um, why don't we uh, grab... There's the far chase view. And we'll... Um, We'll go back and check out a couple of things. Actually, why don't we go the lap before? Let's check out this key moment in the race here. And we might go... Uh, let's see it from here. Spend a bit of time on this one in the stream after the race. Um, go check out that at Top Split TV. It's in the VODs there. The two races I did last night are there. You can check it out. I had a ton of fun in the Discord with the boys. A lot of fun. Now you can see three wide. Into, <coughs> excuse me, into the braking zone here. Vasco's had the best run. He's got, in my pers my perspective, the best um, position coming into the corner. You've got Nagai, one of the best in the world, in the blue car in the centre. Hendrickson, arguably and certainly historically, one of the best in the world as well. On the outside, and there's Muggins poking his nose up uh, in the rear there, just thinking, give me the inside line, boys. And I, we also had Sasaki behind, um, which I was aiming to leave him a lane on the outside to use if he wanted to, um, whilst maintaining the integrity of my inside line. Uh, I'd suggest to you that you've got three car wide here. Vasco's in the position that I would want to be, uh, absolutely, because all the momentum's going to push out. But also, um, it's a very, you'll notice it's a very narrow entry. And what you'll see is we step through this, both Vasco and Nagai, you can see it there, there's a very distinct move to the left to open up the corner. But there is absolutely three lanes there. Um, and what you see there is as they come together, I think my view is there's a lot to be said about as they rotate using the, the brake pedal to, to shift the, the nose of the car in, the rear of the car out. You just see the rear of the cars step out. And it's just, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's 100% a racing incident in my books. I think they've done well to get this far into the corner, three wide, in all honesty. Um, and then there's, you know, whether it's net code or adjustments or whatever it is, two of the best go by the wayside and, um, and a fall away. Unfortunately, uh, that's sometimes how it goes. That leaves uh, a three-car battle between Sasaki, Sarovsky and myself. We'll skip forward a bit. See Vasco's taking the inside line. Uh, Sasaki's patiently waiting behind. Um, there's some key moments coming up, obviously. This part just plays out as it normally does. See, straight away, I think Vasco was thinking the same thing. See how narrow he is? He's thinking, I'll get over to the right. I actually compromised a bit of my exit speed here um, to get over to the right quickly. See, Vasco thought the same thing, I think. I can't speak for him, but I think he did. Then he comes over to cover Sasaki, who lifts. I think that's late but legit at this stage of the race. And then into the braking zone here. And this is what I mean. You can set up here, and I've done it myself. You can run the outside uh, at Canada, and then up through 13 and 13A, the next sort of left-hander, uh, sort of right swerve in to go left at 13A, um, you can get the inside run there and that can set you up for the outside. Even if it's the outside of the final corner, you can get better drive on the outside because the guy on the inside has a compromise, more compromised run out. So we're, we're actually, a fair, Vasco's a fair bit away from the outside of the track there. Um, if I was going to be a, a coach or a critique, of what he's done there. He's gone deeper, which you can do on the outside, which is good. Um, we've gone out. Plenty of racing room given. Like, I could be on the white line if I wanted to because the, the racing line here really does take you out onto the uh, the dark wooden curbing there. Interestingly, though, Sasaki is a bit further out on entry. If I was him, I'd be thinking coming up the... following me through and coming up the outside. But you can see how short he is on the exit too. He could have flowed right out, although perhaps the space there is with Sarovsky. Anyway, so this is the interesting point in the race. 
I think Vasco might have lifted there. And I'll be honest with you, when um, uh, when I, I saw him drop a bit behind there at this second last corner, I thought the job was done. I honestly thought the job was done. Let's, um, let's just step it through. I want to hear what it sounds like. Plenty of room. It's quite tight. Yeah, he lifts. And that was it. Now, I can't, I'll have to ask him because he's either lifted to let me back in to get the run out of the final corner. That was his strategy. Or he's lifted because he was worried about, you know, contact. You, you don't lift there. That's, that's the thing. In my book, you don't lift there. Um, but uh, let me just find the chase view again. No, I don't want far chase. Just chase will do. Uh, and then, of course, we... Uh, that's just kind of history. See, there's plenty of room there. Sasaki's checked up. If I'm Sasaki... Oh, Sasaki lifts as well. If I'm Sasaki, I'm chucking it up the inside of the final corner. I want P2. Because I don't think you can win it from third. And see, I had a completely uncompromised run. I've been working on getting my rear tyre um, onto the kerb there on the outside. I haven't done a very good job there. <laughs> I wasn't committed enough to the corner. But Vasco's even more compromised than me. So I'm, I'm going to get the... And look, he's shallower on exit. Yeah. And there, I, I knew I had it once we exited the corner. I must admit I got a little bit nervous as we got close, but I, I was confident out of the exit of the second last corner. And at this point, Vasco's coming over the radio, blowing up, Deluxe. Damn it, you beat me. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, that was it. That was, uh, that was the big one for this week. Uh, and it was uh, a lot of fun. Massive, massive night out for me. Really enjoyed it. Now, um, let's take a look at our results, shall we? If they'll come up, come on, there we go. The Skipjack, round six, season 20, season two, 2022. McKellar takes it out. That was my biggest race win ever, as I said. I got, what did I get? I think I got 256 championship points for that, and I gained 62 IR. I'm now at my highest I rating ever um, in the six years, seven years I've been doing it. So I'm pretty wrapped with the racing here this week. Had a couple of bumps and bruises, but anyway. Vasco's in second, Sasaki in third. Um, Sabadal started on the second row, finished essentially on the second row. I think he was pretty happy with that race result. Zoma, who uh, is a quality racer in fifth. Russell Clark, get that India. He was um, he was up four spots uh, into six, as was Gardner into seventh. Ben Snell started last on the grid, finished in seventh position. That's a fair drive. He gave 60 I rating. He gave the same amount of I rating as I did because he was, uh, what was he, car 17 uh, for finishing seventh. That's what a, a big strength of field will do for you. Um, yeah, so they, those were the guys, Donald, Russell, um, and uh, Ben, who were in the chat with me. A good recovery for one of the Torpedo boys, Mr. Jones there in 11th, um, Hendrickson all the way down in 17th, and Mr. Budgeon, unfortunately, down in 18th. I'll just see who got the last spot there. It was Mr. Ortsu. So, um, yeah, anyway, that was it, folks. If you want to actually check out the, the racing live, check out Top Split TV where I do my, my Twitch streams uh, of some of the races that I do. Also, head over there uh, on each and every Sunday night where we do the uh, the proper ANZ strength of field race. Uh, at 9.15 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is GMT plus 10 at the moment. Um, you think this racing's good. The racing in the SNL races in the past season or so have been absolutely amazing. We're averaging a, a 5,000 strength of field plus. We've had over 6,000. Um, and you can see the quality of the racing here tonight uh, in this race was awesome. The quality in those races has just been outstanding, unbeatable. Go check it out. Top Split TV on a Sunday night or um, uh, over at uh, Top Split, uh, The Top Split on YouTube. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. Um, really enjoyed my racing here this week. Couldn't be a diff more different track next week, though, at Knock Hill, but, uh, and it's the reverse layout, too. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, we'll see how we go there. Until next time, folks, I'm Alex McKellar, and I will say ciao for now.